Welcome back to another episode of Shades of Blue Soccer Show 1v1. I think that's what we're calling it now. Uh, all right. With me, I have Mike Kuhn. This is Thad Bell, in case you guys don't know that from watching this in the past. Mike, what is your hottest of hot takes about that amazing game? I, I don't have a hot take. At least I don't think it's a hot take. My, my, my feeling on the game is... is like there are there are games that are basically kind of cakewalks like like Saturday against the Rapids was and there are games that are a grind and tonight was a grind and good teams find ways to win games like that good teams get lucky and win games like that and tonight it it was a bit of a combination of that for sporting to to get all three points there was definitely some luck in there a couple of posts couple of posts uh, a uh, yeah couple of posts some um, good opportunities that were missed uh, by Cincinnati I thought but I mean overall sporting did what sporting needed to do to win the game tonight okay so I, I just came up with the stupidest take possible to have out of this <laughs> that's, that's why I had to do a double face palm on my own self for a second it was a double post night for the team that employs Saad Abdul Salam <laughs> How about that? Uh, oh, I feel bad for him sometimes. He's <laughs> never, ever, ever going to live that down, unfortunately. No, and and no hate for the guy, man. I no, I would no none whatsoever. He that's not even nothing against him. It's just twice tonight they hit the left post, once on a penalty, and once uh, a little bit later when Tim actually saved it. But fortunately, the referee missing a call it was in favor of sporting this time yeah that was i mean missing that was i I don't know how him or the linesman missed the touch because especially on replay it was kind of obvious the touch was in there but by melia so yeah just a a weird missed call there but i mean i'll take it yeah unless he was (laughs) obstructed by the guy shooting that's about the only thing you know, that's about the only thing, because I, th- I don't think you could have not known it was deflected from any angle looking towards the goal. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, and it, one other thing you notice he did today, he blew the whistle a couple seconds before full time. Yes. Before the, yeah. Be- he didn't before the nine. He, it was, it was at like, uh, it was at like 93 57 or something like that for four yeah. minutes of stoppage time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he, he blew it early and, uh, n- I will say that for sporting in the first half, and I know a lot during the game was made of, oh, maybe it was the turf or something. Their passing did not look good tonight. And that's the second road game in a row where uh, where I felt like sporting's passing was just bad because it, it was the same way in Chicago. In, in Chicago, I think they had – something like 65 percent percent passing yeah. um i can't remember what tonight's is i'm trying to pull it up while we're talking right now and i'm stalling for time basically but it it felt like at least in the first half like our our passing stats were just really really poor in they the, were uh in the first half so um, s- apparently 78 overall for yeah. the uh for the game for and i think that climbed up by a good 10 percent in the second oh. half Definitely, because yeah, the first half was looked poor in in terms of passing. I will lots say, of pass, lots of passes directly to Cincinnati players, lots of passes to kind of nobody. Um, just not, yeah, not a lot of of good passing or in, in the first half. I do think that they traditionally pass poorly on turf fields, especially not good turf fields. Um, and they also don't have a chance to practice on it beforehand because of the, especially the way it is now you have to fly in the same day. And then um, in some defense of their passing in Chicago, that field was terrible. So well, with sporting well, being it's, used. It's, yeah. I, I mean, soldier field is a football field. So, I mean, right. y- you're not going to be able to roll the turf every single week to make it flat for soccer after a football team has played on it basically. So no, I, I mean, in that regard, I understand. And 
Yeah, I, I, I get it with the turf. It just was, I was surprised at how, how bad some of the passing was at times tonight, but I mean, second half, they, they cleaned it up and they, they looked a lot better for, for long periods of the second half. So they did. I'm and pleased some of that with was three points. Some of that was change in personnel. Some of that was, you know, I think a little more motivation coming off the bench. Yeah, no, that that's totally, de- definitely. I mean, sorry, I'm trying to avoid the light that's behind me tonight. Um, the, uh, the, I felt like Cincinnati came out with a really good game plan tonight. They were high pressing pretty much for the first 20 ish minutes, I guess it was. Yeah. They, they were holding possession. They were pinning K- Kansas city in deep and, and it took a while before, um, but before Kansas city really got into it. And I mean, looking at the possession stats, it ended up Cincinnati had 62%. Kansas city had 38. And I think that, I mean, that was basically what it was in the first half as well. I mean, Cincinnati controlled the ball a lot tonight. And I think for the most part, Kansas city kind of let them, um, they, they yeah. came out with, like I said, they came out with the high press. Um, we got a few chances. Finally, I think when uh, Shelton and Russell switched sides and Russell started going down the left, we finally started to get some fi- finally started to get some offense got some good opportunities and then um second half we got the the goal came and we kind of were able to just sit back and absorb the pressure which cincinnati didn't give a whole lot and so we were okay just handing them possession and being like okay try to come beat us and cincinnati couldn't how much do you think the uh, – you said that Cincinnati came with a good game plan. How much do you think it was potentially Sporting's game plan was to let them have possession, sit back, because they're not a great attacking team. They have some good talent. They just have not been able to make it click. Maybe that's the case where we're going to save our legs a little bit on turf, especially some of the older guys, and let them do the running, let them do the the, the effort, and – sit back a little bit and hope for a uh, – not hope for, but find your moments. You know what I mean? Because they no, have that, – Yeah, that – I mean, and that that's perfectly legit too. I, I'm sure that that was a part of it. I mean, I've never been the biggest Fontas fan. I think these last two games against a uh, Colorado team playing for the first time in a month and a Cincinnati team that's really bad um, in terms of attack – I think Fontas what I don't think Fontas's weaknesses that we saw last year were going to be exploited in these two games. So in that sense, Kansas City could also sit back a little bit more, especially on the road on turf, and kind of let let Cincinnati come to them and kind of hide some of the deficiencies in in the the defense tonight, basically. So so may, the game plan may have worked out for both of them, for both teams, until the second half. Yeah, and I mean the, I the I loved the goal. Um, I mean you don't see a lot of you, you don't see forwards, uh, especially designated player forwards that are ten million dollars come in to score goals, all the way out at uh, on the. As as I like to tell the kids I coach, heels on the line uh, looking for a ball out wide and then makes the run and gets a great through ball from Kinda and attacks that space between the edge of the six and the edge of the box and then just plays the little, the, the little pass back as everybody's running towards goal, plays the ball back to the oncoming Espinosa who just has to shoot it. And I mean, even a deflection is going to take it in so that – I really like the buildup uh, of the goal and the unselfishness of of uh, Polito's play there. And that's that's one of the things that we've noticed about Polito this year. Uh, it really, we kind of did it with we knew it with with some of the research we did before he even came here that he's not the traditional number nine that's always going to be sitting at the top of the spear kind of thing. He will 
drop all the way back into the midfield. I mean, he'll drop back almost to the defense if he needs to. He'll go from side to side. He'll fill whatever spot needs to be filled in order to make the team better. Well, and it's funny, right, as um, – because it felt like early on in the game he was staying up higher. And it almost – like right before the goal, I was actually getting ready to tweet out. I'm like, how much longer is it going to be before Polito really starts dropping deeper to try to get more of the ball? And then, sure enough, the game – the goal came and I just kind of deleted the tweet. Because, I mean, that that's exactly what happened. He he came deep, he came wide looking for the ball and initially didn't get it but saw the space to make the run and got a nice pass from Keen to there. So, I mean, he in, in a sense, he did did that. So, he, But he no, he, he, he was staying higher tonight for, for the most part. He, at, at least at the start, he was – he, he was staying higher. It was almost like he was on an island on his own in the first half. It, it was almost uh, old school sporting with the with Dwyer Island up top because Polito spent a lot of time on his own uh, up top and kind of trying to hold the ball up for other people to come through for him. Difference is he didn't fall down anytime he was touched. True. Not a swipe at Dom at all, was it? <laughs> um, no. And no, Dom was great in that role. So he was the the best pest we could possibly have. Yeah. Um, but Polito can do all those different things, and that's one reason we went for that guy like that. I mean, he's if you combine what Dom could do and what Shelton could do at their peak, that's what Polito can do. Yeah. So, um, on the did you think it was a penalty kick? Borderline, yes. Uh, and uh, the only reason I say borderline was I thought that um, Punchich had enough slowing him down that the guy actually passed up his own ball. And at that point, it becomes less of a penalty than it is a, you know, he's playing the ball out and the guy takes a dive. But I, I still would like to see it again. So the the thing that I kept coming back to as I watched it, whether it was a forceful pull or not the hand on the shoulder was always what was going to get him called there. Whether it was, whether he grabbed him and pulled or whether it was just kind of hand there, that's what, if, if they, and they did review it. um, So I won't say if, but as they're reviewing it, that's really the main thing they're seeing there. They're seeing Puncic with, with his hand on Amaya's shoulder and there's just enough pullback there to leave no doubt in my mind that that was a that that was a penalty kick in that situation. And Amaya's gonna going to feel that contact. And guess what? He's gonna do what attacking players do: sell it. Yep. Yeah. And I have, and when I say borderline, I have zero issue with it being called a penalty. That's not not it at all. It's when I say borderline, it's more of my judgment of it and it may be mildly biased in this case, but uh, I have zero problem with it being called a penalty. Now, uh, did you think it was a handball? Because that's what VAR was reviewing, was right. uh, w- was whether it was a handball by Amaya on the lead-up to it. Again, kind of another borderline scenario. It looked like it came down and hit his arm, but it was very high on the arm. Yeah. The, the, thing, that, the thing that I thought was going to get it reversed because some of the replays I thought that hey maybe they are he, his arm moves forward right as he was trying to play it because he was trying to he got it basically right on his shoulder and I I mean I, I've messing around you did, I, I've knocked a ball to friends just messing around with the ball with my shoulder to and I but in this sense his arm was away from his body and it almost looked like his arm was moving forward and I thought for a split second, Oh, he's going to see that and see that motion. And I'm, I'm going to guess that that's what, that's what the VAR wanted Gantar to go take a look at was just the movement of the arm. I didn't initially, I didn't think it was going to get called back, but seeing the replays, I'm like, if it's called back, it's because of his arm motion as it hits his shoulder. Yeah. There is one angle that really made it look like it was, Almost intentional. The, and... the, the the straight on look at him from behind the goal, what I think is the one you're 
thinking that, of. That could be. I don't really remember. But yeah, I know there was one angle that looked like it, and then there was another angle that didn't really make it look that way. So, again, I'm, I'm with the clear and obvious error being the, the, the guideline, yeah. um, I'm okay with it not being overturned. I'd have been fine with it. That would have saved, a, you know, a few minutes of stress, but. but no, I, I, yeah. In the end, I had no problem with the penalty kick. I had no problem with the, uh, with the, it not being called back for the handball. They, they were both fine calls. There are also calls that on another day, you're not going to see called. They, they're, they're at times borderline. So it, it, it is what it is. And we're talking about it in that sense, because, he hit the post with it. You mean on those days when Sporting's the attacking player, we're not going to see those called? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm not Peter Vermes. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to go down that route. You won't get I, fined for going down that route. No, but I almost got kicked out of a youth game over the week over the last weekend for basically going down that route. So I'm not going down that route again tonight. Uh, so so now you're one of those guys at the youth games that you're harassing those. I was poor... co- no no no. I was coaching. I was coaching and we had been in a situation where we were getting straight arms fouling our kids and no calls were made. Our kid made, did commit a foul. He got his arm out a little bit, but it wasn't a full stiff arm out. And I may have uh, laughed a little too loud for the referees liking at the, uh, at the fact that he had called it on us again and got, uh, got a talking to, I thought I was going to get thrown out of my first game ever. So anyway, sidetracking into youth soccer there for a little bit. Well, I'm going to just going to keep going with that for just a second. It actually seems like the referees in youth soccer have been instructed to be more forceful with the coaches lately. It, I, I, my daughter's team has a very mild coach. I mean, he's a quiet guy. And I've seen him warned a lot and carded lately. So, Well, they – yeah, I, I can't tell you for certain. Th- this game was the first game I've ever actually gotten on a referee this season that I can recall anyway. So for the most part, I keep my mouth shut. I just was kind of frustrated with the refereeing and also our kids play that night. So it is what it is. But and, I mean, and all support to referees. We want them to be there. We need referees. <laughs> yes, yes. We I do not want in to hindsight, them too much. I should not have been laughing as much as I did, but I was frustrated with the 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 inconsistency of the calls and guess what happened after that happened consistency came back so i i count it as a uh, good argument to have had as well at the same time so fair enough anyway back to All the right. game back to the game Polito scores they no, uh espinoza scores espinoza scores <laughs> uh assists espinoza scoring um since he does not score on the penalty uh, hits the post, comes back to him. He touches it again, which is a no-no. And j- yeah, and Amelia just, saves it anyway. <laughs> j- just to be clear, because I did have a couple people ask on Twitter tonight, the reason that was called was because a penalty kick is like any other free kick. Players cannot touch it twice in a row. It has to touch somebody else before that player can touch it again. Since it hit the post, came right back to him, it did not touch another player, so therefore it was uh, ruled a dead ball. So I uh, wanted to get that out there to explain to people that may not have known why specifically the uh, foul was called. I've seen that happen in indoor a lot more than outdoor, but it ha- does happen, and that is the rule. Um, but as, as I told a friend of mine, Mealy was, or as a friend of mine told me, Melia, because what I had said, that's the first time in a while I recall Melia diving the wrong way on a penalty kick. Even when he allowed penalty kicks, he was usually diving the correct direction yeah. on, on penalty kicks. Uh, a friend of mine, or uh, Chad Reynolds, uh, responded with, oh, that was uh, that Melia was basically playing uh, mind games with him. And he, he, he got him to go that way, knowing that, uh, knowing that he hit the post. So Mealy was playing 40 chess tonight. Melia dove to the right, pushed the goal a little bit farther <laughs> so that when he shot, he had the left post moved in and he hit it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's, um, we'll have to go back and look at the replay on that to make yeah. sure, well, but I'm pretty I, sure I that's almost, what happened. I almost want to need to go back and look and see when's the last time Melia went the wrong direction on a penalty kick. Cause I'm actually curious about 
when the last time he is. I know it's not been this year. How many so. game films or, or you know highlights are you going to have to go through to find that? You think? Oh, not as many as you'd think. I'm usually have a pretty good memory on when penalty kick goals were scored against us. So I'm surprised I'll, that's I'll, not a stat in your record somewhere. Maybe oh, I, it went I the do. right way, it went the wrong way. <laughs> no, I don't have those stats. But Ex- I mean, I, I I'm I can th- all this year he has though. I mean, to be fair, we haven't faced a ton of penalty kicks, but. This year, he's gone the correct direction on every single penalty kick. So, yep. the uh, The next worrisome moment was uh, when Amelia deflected it and Vasquez hit the left post again. That, that, yeah. Now that was a I, I the spin move by uh, Vasquez to get my idea there. I th- that whole build up by Cincinnati there was actually a really good build up build up play there. And yep. yeah, that, uh, yeah, I, I'm also not sure how uh, Gantar or his assistant missed Melia, missed Melia's touch on that, but yeah, again, we'll, we'll, we'll accept the bad call for this call, one time. As, as the old adage goes, uh, calls always come back around at some point. They may not be in the way you want, but sometimes calls come back around to uh, to help you. And I'm not saying this th- this uh, takes back for th- this is an equal to the uh, the Maurer foul on Kinda in Dallas, but no. It, eventually, all everything comes around in some sense. The 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 calls all even out in the end, if not in the same game over time you're going to get a, a bad call going your way. I know this guy named Vermees who would argue with you in this case. <laughs> oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he would, and I'm sure he would have a passionate argument against me for it. Uh, but I, I remember him saying, like, during all of that stuff going on, people say calls come around and equal out over time, but they don't. I know they don't. <laughs> did, did, See, the, my my response to him, because that came in the Dallas game, would be to just pull up a photo of Melia saving that ball on the – saving that ball that was over the line. I, I'm not I, – I, I was as pissed about the Maurer call, non-call as anybody, but there are g- fouls that are going – there are going to be times where you're screwed by the referees. There's going to be times when the referees help you by screwing the other team. It yeah. does happen. And I, I, I'm going to disagree with Vermees. It does happen. There are instances where, <laughs> where it's going to come back around. And again, the, the way uh, especially from that side of the field, I believe the guy that was taking uh, Cincinnati's corners, he scored an Olympico this year already. So I did not dislike the fact that he couldn't play another one from uh, from his uh, left foot to swing in towards goal. So wait, one twelfth of their goals was an Olympico? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yep. Because I think that's all they had before this game, wasn't it? Twelve. Uh, 11, uh, 11 or 12. It might be 11 in league play and one in the uh, knockout rounds of the MLS is back, or maybe it's 12 and 13 now, something like that. Yeah. But I just remember Ajax scoring two more than they had scored all year in that one. That, game. that was, so, that was when they had 11. So, so yeah. maybe it's 11 league goals and then one in the knockout rounds of the MLS is back tournament. So whatever it is, it's not a lot. No, it is not. They, they are, um, yeah, they're, as we said, they are not a good offensive team, and uh, Yap Stam has has uh, a lot of work to do. In and to be fair to him, it's not a good year to need to add players to your team from outside of MLS, especially with them coming into a bad turf stadium and well, and all the fair, other things. And to be fair, this was their last game at right. that stadium, so. But, I mean, bringing them in this year to that, where you'd be bringing them in next year to something nicer, the offseason will probably be kinder to them. Plus, they might actually have somebody competent bringing in players at this point. Well, we'll have to wait and see. But, anyway, on to uh, Minnesota on Sunday. Hopefully. 
I guess would be the best way to say it, given the news that came out before the game tonight. <laughs> Did you not hear that? I don't Minnesota, think so. Minnesota had another positive COVID test before the game tonight, before their game against Colorado tonight. Did they play? They did play. Okay. So I'm just saying that <laughs> they may be playing now, but give it another couple days and who knows what could happen. So well, presumably, like... as of right now, we're playing on Sunday. I don't think they could probably worry about them playing Colorado because they couldn't infect everybody that's already had it. <laughs> as many as those guys had at one point. Uh, okay. Fair point. Bad joke, bad joke. Not not joking about people's health. But no, so yeah, Minnesota had a positive uh, COVID test tonight before their game against Colorado. Okay, so uh, not that people need to be watching me, but I keep looking over because I have the, the replay is up on that screen right there. <laughs> And right now, Felipe has the ball in the box and oh, decides to dribble towards the end zone and said, just toe poke it with your right foot, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that now. Yeah, I, I won. He, he, that, that needed to be hit first time with the right foot. Instead, he tried to get it to the left, and then it kind of got caught underneath him, so he pushed it further wide and completely lost his shooting chance there. Yeah, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. And there, there was a play in the second half. I think it was with Duke, but it's like it went to the wrong foot for every player who, because then they move it back to their foot, but then they didn't have a shot, so they move it to the next guy to the wrong foot. And then, well, that that wasn't just Duke. That was Duke no. getting it to Hurtado, getting it to Russell, getting right. it to Polito, getting right. it back to Russell, and then Russell finally taking a shot. There were like five different opportunities for shots to take be taken there. And we didn't get one until the very last chance. So it's like, somebody take a shot. Just one time it with the wrong foot, guys. I mean, it's not the wrong foot. It's just you're not your best foot. Yeah. When so, you're within 12 yards of the, the goal line, take your chance. Yeah. Even I can score from that distance once in a while. All right. In, so In the end, as we said, it's three points. It's not pretty. All three – Wins are never all, are not always going to be pretty. I think I said that right. Yeah, wins are not always going to be pretty. Sometimes they're going to be a grind. Sometimes they're going to be ugly. And good teams find a way to win ugly games. Yeah, it's. I will say that it is mildly worrisome that it was a ugly game against Cincinnati, the worst team in the league. And it was a... Fairly easy game against a team that had not played for a month and barely practiced for a few days in the last game. So this next game, Minnesota, assuming it happens, um, will be a good test. No, it, it absolutely will. And to be fair to Cincinnati, they've been tough to play at home. Right. They they it took a it took a stoppage time winner by Minnesota to beat them uh, last weekend. An unfair, a bad call stoppage time winner, if I remember correctly. All four of their uh, shutouts, I believe, have come at home. And this was actually the weird stat that I remembered from the game. All of Cincinnati's games this year have been won by the team that scored first. Yeah. They've not had a scoring draw. All hmm. their draws have been zero zero draws. So when they win when they score first, they've won every game. When they've allowed first, they've lost every game. When and then there's been the shutouts. So it, it's it, it's just a that there, there's nothing to it but you know I love stats. So that that's just a weird stat that <laughs> that is just crazy to me. No, in, in, in fairness to Yap Stam um, and Cincinnati, when you have a not great team, you build a good defense. And, you know, I, I don't love teams at bunker, but they, if you, once you build a team that can defend, then you can start working your midfield and you can start working your forwards, and they have some talent. Perhaps when they, add another player they get some more time together they don't have covid everything else affecting the the world maybe they actually become a decent team so in in fairness again i don't love teams at bunker but that's what you do when you're not great 
and I wouldn't have to say they bunker, but they are a heavily defensive team. They do bunker sometimes. You, 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 when, when you don't have the attacking talent, you make teams come to you. Right. Basically. And you make it you, hard. Yep. You make it hard and you make teams, uh, you, 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 you set your team up to absorb the, the pressure basically. And then you try to hit on the counter. It right. is it because it's still easier in this league, even with the money coming into attackers to build from the back up. You, you build, you start with the goalkeeper and a strong defense, and then you can still work your way up the field. Yeah. Cause if, if you have one decent forward, you can still snatch a goal every once in a while. Sporting uh, or the wizards taught you that in 2000. Yep. Uh, and a couple of years of beautiful attacking soccer under Anafo. <laughs> no comment. Attractive attacking soccer. That's what it was. No comment. It happened once in a while. Anyway, Usually anything else? Usually against a bad DC United team. <laughs> I don't know their home away breakdown. I'm just trying to poke holes here, so... Well, you can't poke holes if you don't have facts, Mike. I won't allow it. I will give you just as much crap back as you give me, as you know that. I think we're, uh, yeah, I I think we've we've reached the end here at this point. I do too, because otherwise we're just going to give each other shit for the next half hour, and that will probably, actually, it might be entertaining, but I have stuff to do. It it should all get cut. Yeah, because I heavily edit this high quality. <laughs> oh, it's broadcast. super high quality. Super high quality. Um, all right. So thanks for listening. Anybody who's made it this far, um, comment. We've, we've had at least a couple people say that they, they like us doing these once in a while. And we uh, had difficulty trying to get a regular podcast as a post game tonight. But that's okay. Anything else you go? One, any last word? Just short and quick. Nope. Nope. Yeah, because Mike don't do short and quick. <laughs> I don't do short and quick. Uh, all right. That's what she said. <laughs> Can I get a sound effect? Like, like the drum? <laughs> or just cut my mic. <laughs> I could do that. Ooh, hey, wait. I can do that. Mute. You're muted now, Mike. All right, you're back. All right, again, thanks for listening, people. I am going to leave this because I want to see anybody who listens this far. Um, thanks for joining. See you this weekend, hopefully. Are, are you going? Are you potentially going to the game? No, I'm. I well, I don't think so. Anyway, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm ready to attend a sporting event yet. Yeah. I, anyway, thanks for joining. We'll talk more. Thanks for listening. That's it.